Okay, let's look at Mendel's monohybrid cross. Monohybrid. And it sounds like a complex word, but it's not too bad. So what is a monohybrid cross? So it is a cross between true breeding individuals that express contrasting traits for a single character. Okay, so let's look at one of Mendel's monohybrid crosses. So the trait or the character we're going to look at is uh, plant height and he crossed a tall true breeding plant to a dwarf true breeding plant tall and dwarf in true breeding means that the genotypes are homozygous two big d's here two little d's here that we you know we just went over what the genotypes would be um, for the dominant alleles and the recessive alleles that cause these phenotypes so true breeding where does that word come from true breeding means if mendel was to take a tall true breeding plant and cross it to another tall true breeding plant that it would produce only tall progeny no matter how many times he did these crosses as in a true breeding lineage all the plants would produce tall offspring if they were crossed again to another member of that true breeding lineage same thing for dwarf if, if he crosses the dwarf plant to another dwarf plant from a, a true breeding dwarf plant all of the offspring are um, dwarf and I will go back and forth between progeny and, and offspring. They mean essentially the same thing. So we're gonna call this the P1 generation for the parental generation. And when he crossed these, well, what did he get? He got all tall offspring. So and a cross between these guys here, pollen and eggs, or eggs and pollen, um, or pollen and eggs, whichever way you want to do it. All of the offspring, the baby plants here, they were all grew to be tall plants. So why? Let's see. Well, these tall plants here can only make one type of gamete. Gametes with a D genotype, right? Each gamete has to inherit either the big D allele here or the big D allele here. There's only one type of allele. So all the gametes are genetically identical. They all have a big D allele. For this one here, put gametes here. For this one right here, all of the gametes have to have a little D allele because there are only little D alleles in this parent here. So when these come together by fertilization, all of the offspring have this genotype, heterozygous, big D, little d. And we already said that the big D is dominant to the little d. So they all have the tall phenotype. And again, we call this the F1 generation. Now to get the, and, and uh, just a maybe side note is that this stands for filial, I guess of brothers or of siblings or something. So the first filial generation is the F1. Now to get the F2, what we need to do is take one of these plants here from the F1 and cross it to another plant in the F1. And so one of the important things for uh, being a student of genetics is understanding how the uh, genotypic and phenotypic ratios of the F2 generation um, are created by crossing these guys and knowing what those knowing what those genotypic and phenotypic ratios are. So we can actually predict what the F2s are. So Mendel, when he did his crosses, he made observations and then tried to explain, but we can predict, um, explain how they came about, but we can predict what they will be um, based on Mendel's postulates.
So we're going to cross uh, a tall plant to another tall plant with the same genotype from the F1. And let me switch pages here. So F2 of, let's see, this cross here. So we cross these two, we're going to get um, the F2 generation. So and what we want to do is we want to know or determine what are the F2 phenotypic and F2 genotypic ratios. Well, this is where we can use what we call uh, a Punnett square, named after Reginald, Reginald Punnett, um, I think in the early 1900s. Now, what you need to do is look at each genotype of each parent and determine how many different genotypically distinct gametes can be produced. So this parent right here can produce gametes with a big D allele and gametes with a little d allele. And because of Mendel's postulate on segregation, we know half of the gametes will be big D and half will be little d, right? Because segregation says the alleles will separate from one another and, and uh, gametes will inherit one or the other with equal likelihood. Now the same thing for this parent, right? Same genotype. It's going to produce the same type of gametes, which in plants is pollen, leads to pollen or eggs. Now with the Punnett square, what you do is you make a, a little table here and you put the gamete genotypes of one parent along the tops of the columns and you put the gamete genotypes of the other parent um, at the beginning of the rows. So in a simple cross like this involving only uh, one character, two alleles in each parent, we end up with a four-celled Punnett square. Oh, this is a G, not, there should be a D, sorry. So, and we just fill in the letter. So D goes here and here, because there's one here. D goes here and here. Little d goes here and here. This little d goes here and here. Okay, so what this is doing, it, it, the Punnett square offers us a, a neat way to keep track of how the different gametes can come together during fertilization. So, and this is a random process. So if uh, there were say a hundred or a thousand or a million fertilization events, we would expect one, two, three, four, one out of four to result in this homozygous dominant genotype. Two out of four, one, two, two quarters, should be the heterozygous genotype. One out of four should be the homozygous recessive genotype. Now, because these each have at least one dominant allele, all of those, this one quarter and these two quarters for three quarter total will be tall. And this one quarter will be dwarf. So this is it. This is Mendel's F2 um, genotypic ratio one quarter, two quarter, one quarter, so one to two to one. So one homozygous dominant to two heterozygous to one homozygous recessive. And this is the phenotypic ratio, three to one, or three quarter to one quarter. Three with the dominant phenotype, one to one with the recessive phenotype. And he's got this same ratio no matter what character he was studying, whether it be seed color, plant height, seed shape, um, and some of the other ones that he, he looked at. I think flower color maybe. Um, it's been a while since I covered those, so I'm forgetting them. I think we have it in the notes though. So, okay, so this is the F2 genotypic ratio. This is the F2 phenotypic ratio. And there you have it. That is Mendel's monohybrid cross.